Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Deadpool here on the Corky's World Channel. I'm Corky, as always, but you guys know that by now, right? So we're back. We're uh, we're blasting our way through Genosha. There are, there are relics and Easter eggs all over. You know the Sentinel heads. Obviously, huge crucial point in X Men history that uh, that they just can't seem to get right in the movies. But a lot of people actually uh, make the point that Fox can't do anything right in the in the X Men franchise, and that they should actually just uh, step aside and give up the reins to a company that maybe has a little more vision, a little more attitude, you know, can can do it a little better. I just don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, as as fans, we'd like to think that uh, that movie studios have what we, you know, what the comics want best at their at heart, and it's just not ever the case, you know. Studios are out to make money; that's their job. So. Uh, they're not going to really focus on, like, oh, you didn't like our interpretation of this movie? Who cares? You paid to see it. It made tons of money. You're going to pay to see however many sequels we churn out. Which is... It's it's not good that but that's how it goes, but that's just the way Hollywood works. And, uh... I don't know. Like, the X-Men franchise as a whole has done things right. It's done things wrong. You know, they tried rebooting it with First Class, and now we have, you know... Uh... We have Apocalypse. I mean... I didn't hate X-Men Apocalypse. It wasn't exactly what I was hoping for, but it wasn't terrible either. So, I have very mixed feelings about it. And uh, maybe I'll do a movie review if you guys are super interested. I'll rewatch it again, you know, because if you're going to do a movie review, I think you should always watch it at least twice. And, you know, most that's not how most people do. You know, like 95% of people who do movie reviews don't do it that way. And it's a shame because I feel like watching a movie a second time can really change your opinion on something that might have really, you know, thrown you off, really left a bad taste in your mouth the first time. Like, uh, for instance, the first time I saw Guardians, I was like, oh, this is great. It's going to be awesome, you know. And then I was totally blown away. And then I watched it a second time and was blown away again for a whole, like, multiple different reasons. You know, like, things that I didn't notice the first time because I was just too enthralled about what was happening on screen to actually take in the little Easter egg sidebars, stuff like that. It's why it's why I feel you should watch uh, movies twice before putting out an official statement on how you feel. Nope, it's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Moving up. And uh, welcome back, guys. Sorry to start the start the episode in such like a crazy serious ish fashion. But like I was saying, you know, X, uh, X-Men, X2, which was called what? United We Stand, right? Uh, and then X3, The Last Stand. We're just, you know, they're not they're not bad movies. They're just not good as, as far as, like, being a comic interpretation goes. Like, they stuck true to the path they were taking. It's not like they were like, we made this first one super serious. I mean, and granted, the movies do get a little cheesier as they go on. Like, 3, it felt they were just trying to shove as many comic book characters and references as, in as they could. Which I believe ultimately led to the downfall of it. But, you know... The first one was kind of serious. And then 2 loosened up a bit. And then 3 was just almost to the point of goofy while still trying to appeal to that darker side of comic book fans. But, it obviously, you know, it it went to the point where it's like, alright, we don't want to see any more of these. Either give them a reboot or pass it on. And like I said, either in the last episode or I've already said, you know, and I just don't remember because I'm talking so fast, but Fox is not going to just pass it on. You know, like, they're going to grip that thing and, and milk it until it's dead. And until it's like finally like, alright, we're losing money at this point, they're never going to stop making X-Men movies. Like, I think... Find a way to get to the surface. Alright, there we go. I think the next X-Men movie is gonna be... Set in the 90s. Cause, so we've had 70s, which was First Class. Which, First Class was the reboot, and... I love it. You know, it's great. Uh, first Class did a wonderful job, in my opinion. It, uh, it took a lot of risks, and I feel like they, uh, they paid off, you know... My first date with a we got so we got so accustomed to uh, Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart as 
as Magneto and Professor Xavier, that just the thought of not being them was just like, oh, what are you guys thinking? You know, you're terrible. You're ruining this franchise. And you can't keep actors the same thing forever, especially when they're at the age of uh, Sir Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart, you know? They're both 60, 70 plus, and the thought that they can always be these characters is just ludicrous. And, you know, in some ways Fox saw that, or, and you know, maybe not even Fox, but the directors themselves, the director-writer themselves was like, hey, you know, maybe it's time to pass the buck. And uh, I think they did an excellent job with James McAvoy and... Michael Fassbender. They are incredible in those roles, and the cast they're building around them is just getting more and more impressive. You know, uh, I want to say his name is Evan Peters. This guy is fast. Try using lock on okay, press and hold. Uh, Evan Peters is as Quicksilver. I think did a much better job than Kickass as Quicksilver, whose name I don't remember. Like not even like close to make a guess to remember. Evan Peters from uh, all the American Horror Stories. He was in. I think he was also in Kickass as like Kickass's friend, if I'm remembering that correctly. thing doesn't look like it takes VHS. Let's see if we can find something to put in here. <laughs> something like this. This looks important. Anyways, now I'm just going on a rant about superheroes and movies and characters and how I feel everyone did. Hey, aren't you gonna make a joke about us putting our thing in that thing? That's too easy. What's the sound of one robotic arm clapping? Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Uh, that was a funny joke. That hole is prime jumping material. I think they call that a glory hole. <sighs> Ugh. Anyways, that's just that's just how I feel. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. So that's what makes America great. And mine is, you know, I was. I really like, uh, I really enjoy First Class. Bam! Uh, what was after First Class? It was First Class. You must be getting closer to Fangirl. You smell the perfume too? And... It smells better, to be honest. Apocalypse was the one that just came out, so what's the one in the middle? Days of Futures Past. I love Days of Futures Past because what everyone was wanting that wasn't in first class was like at least an acknowledgement that the last genre existed. So they gave it to him in a like a fantastic way. They did the Days of Futures Past storyline, and even though they tweaked it a lot uh, from the comics, they still did it in a way that was enjoyable. It referenced the older movies and the older class, and it was kind of like, all right, you know, this is what you got to be. You know, this is how it's going to move forward, and that's the way we're going to do it. And it was great. You know, uh, Apocalypse was good. There were things that I wish were different about it. But, all in all, it was a fun ride. And, uh, now the, like, I think Hugh Jackman's about to, to pass the torch to somebody else. Because he said he only has one more Wolverine movie in him. And, uh, I don't know that it's confirmed. I know it's been pointed at and Hugh said stuff. But... It's looking like it's going to be Old Man Logan, which if it is, that's going to be... If they do it correctly, that's going to be incredible, because Old Man Logan is one of the best storylines in Marvel right now. Lo, behold! Number one fangirl is hot! <laughs> so we're going to squeeze. <laughs> ask what that was about, but I don't want to know. Time is short. We need to get you to Magneto's old citadel across the island. Stupid fantasy! Don't worry. We'll land a real girl someday. This is our game, after all. Wade, are you listening? 
Don't even bother with that security tower. Sinister is up there, broadcasting his... Oh, whoa, whoa, hold up. Mr. Sinister is up there? As in the S-hole who killed that other A-hole who was my contract? One side, Summers. I got me some business to finish. Damn it, Wade, stop! We don't have time to mess with the security. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that's where we're going to wrap up the episode, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing if you did. Uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about the X-Men franchise. I'm really, really interested to know uh, if you guys thought they should have stuck to the older crew or if you think the new crew's better and they should just leave the past behind them. Just let me know your feelings. I would love to hear them. So guys, as always, be good to yourself, be good to each other, and me and Deadpool will see you in the next episode. Later days, guys!